George, I'm starting to think that these podcasts are just becoming about what I'm doing week to week. Well, that's that's true. That that, that it kind of is the idea. Uh, well, I I I guess I could probably just stop rattling off the list of all the things that I'm getting done, and uh, maybe talk more about what I'm doing in the process. But you know. This podcast is kind of my life. This is my 10 minutes of reality radio, uh, as it were, except except for the real paper. It's a real paper, but it doesn't have anything on it. But if I hold the paper, it sounds real, and that's marketing, and that's what's important. It's perception that's important, right? Just ask an MBA. All right. I, this week, I got this video done that you have to go see, and... Personally, this is something I've wanted to make for a long time because I got, I got, I got tired of explaining to friends, you know, how, how the, the little, I mean, how your monitor works, how light works, how web design works, how colors work. I, I've got tired of explaining all that. And I made this video that shows the red, green, and blue colors and how they mix with each other and basically how to make rainbows. Um, it took me 80 hours, I'm estimating to make this thing, uh, that's probably conservative. It probably took me longer than that. And now 80 hours to make this silly little four minute video. I don't know if that is a testament to my diligence or to my ignorance, but, uh, it's definitely, it definitely testament, test it definitely testifies to my tenacity and my perseverance. So that's right. You can quote me on that. I don't know if that time I took testifies to my diligence or my ignorance, but it sure testifies to my perseverance. Ah, uh, you can borrow it and use it. Don't even bother giving me credit. But I go check the video out. It's in the description. Uh, the YouTube channel Ink is a Verb. Ink is a Verb. It's a YouTube channel in the RGB video. And I I really hope that helps a lot. Of, read the description. I'm not going to bore you with it. Big project done. And I, you know, when when you clear your desk of, of, of projects, I, I told a friend, I'm, I'm, last night, I, I went to bed. I, like, I was done. I was done with my work and it was time to go to bed. I've still got more work to do, but I was done with my work for the day. And the friend said, you're getting more efficient. And I said, uh, no. I mean, they were, they were being friendly and conversive. I said, I said, uh, no, I'm, I'm getting stuff done. I'm finally finishing stuff. I've had so many plates spinning and none of them get resolved. Uh, okay, George, uh, that's that. Well, I'll, I'll do that. I've. No, George just made the suggestion that, that I explained to you the, the reason why I, I spin so many plates. See, a friend, good old Dave Marcus, you should look him up. Brilliant genius. Uh, went to Liberty, you know, the university where, uh, see, Jeb, Jeb Bush, ever heard of him? Um, yeah, I think he tried to run for president but people forgot about it. anyhow he may he gave a speech at liberty and um this other guy ted cruz uh people love to love him and love to hate him um ted all around lovable guy uh he gave a speech at liberty and gave his made his announcement he was running for president at liberty um well I mean, you know you'll think about that what's what's more notoriety to be invited to come to the university to make the announcement that you're running for president or to be invited to the university as a presidential candidate, you know, currently seriously aspiring with a, with a committee and everything uh, to give the, the graduation address. I see the graduation address thing is more establishment. That's I'm rich, I'm big, I'm famous, I was a governor, I get to give a speech, aren't I cool? And then the other one, though, is uh, I haven't done all that. I, I just I just want to give a speech. You want to guy, you guys want to hear it? Sure. One is before a captive audience. The other one is before uh, an audience is thrilled to have you there. Uh, I mean, maybe the dean said you got to go to this assembly, but the kids were happy to get out of class or something, you know. 
they were, you know, one was a little bit not regular and the other one was establishment. Which, which one's more of an accomplishment? That right there shows you right there. In, in case you, you forgot who Jeb Bush was, he lost in the primaries earlier than uh, Ted Cruz did. Is all, if you use the establishment, if you use your powers and you try to pull levers and call in favors and, and, and I'm famous, if you try to use that to get your progress, uh, when the going gets tough, you're not going to know what to do. Now, Trump is a man with multiple businesses. And, uh, I mean, you know, I'm not going to evaluate Ted Cruz. Just There's not time in the three minutes remaining. But, you know, I've always tried to live in the fray. I've always tried to live in the real world and not hide in an office. And Dave Marcus, my, my friend who went to Liberty, would always ask me, Jesse, you've got to focus. You've got too many business concepts you're working on. And my, my answer to, to Dave, and Dave's right, he's got a point. We're not going to argue with Dave here. The thing is, uh, he and I will probably talk about in some spa someplace in Asia one day when he gets back over here again. The thing is, I live in the fray. I go to a factory and I say, I want you to make my product. He says, oh, how many are you going to order? I say, well, I don't know. It depends on how the crowdfunding campaign goes. And, he, and he, I can become a low priority at the factory. I'm okay with that. I'm, that's fine with me because I get to see how his factory works. I go back and visit the factory again and I keep, I'm, I become the stray cat who adopts their doorstep. And, and they get used to, and I know the people, they're friends of friends, like this isn't just some random factory, but I'm a very mild associate at most. I keep going back. I have to wait for him. I don't, I five, six, seven years waiting for a factory to answer me. I stay patient. And while I'm waiting for him, I might as well uh, get something else going, keep developing my, my product concept, C- keep working on this over here while I'm waiting for this guy to call me back. I'm, I'm not going to sit and wait for you. I'm going to go start something else. And that's, that's, that's why I have so many projects going because I'm waiting for so many people to call me back. I'm not going to put all my, 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 my eggs into one little, you know, I'm, I'm not going to wait for, you know, just one guy. I'm going to keep going and keep moving. Now, I'm not distracted. I've, I've got all my projects right lined up. Now that, that concept of having one product, that's not per person. That's per project. Each project, each brand, each business, each thing you do needs to have a clear, concise mission and probably start with one product and the other products and concepts and services develop off of that. I mean, look at what Steve Jobs did with Apple. I'm sure you could put an argument that Steve started with simple, easy computing. The the best technology is the technology we don't know we're using. He started with that. And just applied it to other things. Yeah, the brand starts with one product, but I'm going to keep going and starting all the new projects I want to get done while I'm waiting for you to get back to me because, well, somewhat related, I'll just, uh, I'll explain it when I get to the point. Many times people's decisions are wrong, but they have the authority to decide. Maybe they should change, but... Arguing with them won't help once their decision is final. You can't change others. But don't quit. Be a boss. Fix problems under your control. Everyone has some. Start new things. Inspire people. Or publish your dissenting opinions somewhere useful. Just accomplish something. Music lessons for pigs are annoying and achieve little. If you try to teach pigs to sing, consider that you might be wrong and your boss has accepted it and already moved on, which is why he's the boss. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.